What's up, everybody? Jason here for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Another Wax Party Break just sold out. 2023 Top Series 2 Baseball Jumbo 6-Box Case Break Packaging number 5. So here we go, fellas. So we'll do the Wax Party giveaway at the end. Let's just do the break first, of course. Now here's everybody there. Last ball mojo is going to Franklin. We've got the Padres. Wow, I would love that, John. <laughs> I've always actually wanted to go to Hawaii. It was there was supposed to be I was supposed to go on a family trip with my uh, wife's side of the family last year or this past year, but it just it just didn't happen. But yeah, you're you're in Hawaii, right? Yeah, we have quite a few customers actually that are live in Hawaii. Kev, Kev is also uh, from in Hawaii as well. Yeah, I, I'm I'm down. <laughs> I would just always tell Kevin and I tell other customers in Hawaii, I would love to have, I would love for us to be living and breaking in Hawaii, just just for the sense of like, you know, we were kind of a little late night uh, workers here, so we don't start till like 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon for us here, Bryce Harbor. Going on Hawaii time, I could start like at 11 or 12 and be done by like 7, 8 o'clock, you know, kind of have like my normal like 10 to 6 back or uh, 11 to 7. And then, uh, go out at night. But I guess it's a good thing, though. I don't, I don't spend too much money on the weekends anymore. Well, yeah, that's the thing, right? I mean, when we end at, like, 10 or 11, it's only, like, 7 o'clock for you guys. Seven, eight o'clock. It's awesome. I guess it would just kind of suck for like. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I guess it would. It would kind of suck, I guess, for football. But no, I think it'd actually be kind of awesome. I mean, I guess you'd have to wake up at seven a.m. to watch some like one o'clock games on the East Coast, right? So that's kind of early. But football will literally be done for you guys by like, like what, two in the afternoon? <laughs> one in the afternoon? Great. Then I can only imagine when there's like nine o'clock games in the East Coast, or mid noon games in the East Coast. That's nine o'clock here us. So that's like five six in the morning, I bet. But uh, no, that's awesome, man. That's cool. Yeah, maybe you guys should email Jaspie's support and just say, hey, let's just let's take the breakers out there. Do one massive break in Hawaii. Treat us. All right, little Vladdy. And then we'll do these two. Oh, we'll do all the silver packs at the end. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, we, we should, uh, next time when we do that, right, we, the breakers, everybody get to go out to, to, to fin do a finale over there or something like that, or do the promo. Like, maybe fly out the, the customer at the top, that'd be awesome, right? I'm just thinking, thinking of the views. The beautiful water. Everything. It's breaking from the beach. Just take a... 
we'll just take a little little my fire or something. autographed? I feel like sometimes you might get them autographed, right? Two packs. All right, guys, here we go. All right, we got Bull Nailer. Alright, to 199. Josh Bell. Logan, and we got Cole Calhoun gold to 2023. And we got Alex Kirloff. Autograph for the Minnesota Twins, which is Franklin. I did not, Rex. I did not. But I'm sure everybody wants to uh, recruit him to their team, right?
We have a Chipper Jones. You're gonna die, clown! <laughs> No, I did not. I was was half watching the Dodgers game. I seen they won nine nothing nothing today against the Phillies. That's all I've been really paying attention to. Right now I have it on on Happy Gilmore just to kind of get me through this break here. I love Moneyball, man. Moneyball is such a great movie. I, I've seen that like so many times. That's another movie where like if it's playing somewhere on TV when I'm scrolling through the channels or something. I definitely watch that. I don't know if you guys watch Dave. I'm, I'm a big comedy guy, so I love love a lot of comedy shows. Well, Dave, obviously, the little Dickie show. His season finale was wild, first of all, but he was able to get uh, Brad Pitt to, to television for the first time. I don't even know how long. Uh, and Brad Pitt was amazing, man. That was a great episode, too. Yeah, Ben Stiller, <laughs> just making them old ladies work, man. We're talking some high quality ish right here, man. Tyler Freeman. I have seen a couple. I have seen a couple episodes. That I, I, uh, I didn't have at the time. I think it was on HBO, right? For the longest, I, I didn't have HBO Max or anything like that at the time, so I never got to see much of it. But I did see some clips like online. I definitely have to watch that show too. I love Danny McBride. <laughs> Obviously, I've seen a lot of the iconic clips from that show too. <laughs> to 300 Taylor Hearn Cole Calhoun, that's our second gold already. Out of 2023. And then we got Yanner Diaz. 
for the Houston Astros, Glenn and Andrew. Two ninety nine, Jackson oh, Jerkerson profile. Man, he was such a huge prospect back in the day. Soto. And Carl Yastrzemski. Michael Harris, but it's kind of kind of sticking up right there. I don't know if you guys can see that, unfortunately. Atlanta Braves. Going to James. <laughs> no, I called it first. Joy Gell. Kansas City Royals. And two back-to-back, Buto and Isbell. <laughs> and then Mustakis. Right, and actually that Colas is a foil, so let's leave that one up. 
Not sure how he's doing now, but I know he was a bigger international prospect. And Jonathan India. Nice one there for the Reds. Going to Kev. What did you send down in early May? Yeah, I think it was just a little uh, good month of April, right? See, the one thing about baseball that I love but also hate is that, you know, let's just say Ellie De La Cruz, right? Got called up this week. Just, just did great, right? The first couple games. Everybody's just so everybody just wants to sell him, wants to buy him. You know, he's like the hottest thing right now. And you know, I hate I, I hope that doesn't happen, but like let's just say he goes on a on a big like hitless streak or hit you know and just doesn't do well. Then people will start being like, ah, it was just the thing and then they call him down or send him down and then people will be like, ah oh, fuck, like you know it's just like it kinda kills the value because they get called up and they're like at an all time high. And then they do a they go on a bad streak and then they call him down and then all of a sudden people don't want to buy him no more or his value goes down. So that's why one thing I talk about with baseball is that like especially like Ellie right now, just sell him. Just sell him now if you don't want to hold on to the risk of holding on to him long term. Now the kid looks like he's gonna be a star, but again he's super young, right? Plenty of time. But yes, this is exactly happened with Jordan Walker. Everybody wanted to buy him, everything, and then now he's just kinda down here. I'm not saying he doesn't sell well, but like it's just like the the there's always someone new that's gonna get called up in the MLB and be the big thing for a few weeks and then they'll go on a little hitless streak and then all of a sudden nobody wants to buy him no more sell him and then someone else gets called up and then everybody focuses their attention on that guy so it's like you gotta know when to buy and sell and just get rid of it you know to maximize on the value because I tell you right now Ellie Ellie Cruz right now is gonna sell for an all time high right now. He's going to sell for an all-time high. Something's going to happen where, you know, he's going to go on a little hit the streak and not do so well, and then maybe he gets called down. Maybe he doesn't, but right now is the best time to sell that dude. Just ride the high. Some people I know want to hold on to him long-term, which is okay, but, you know, just don't re don't be crying later, right? <laughs> Oh, I should have sold it. Don't regret it. Just got to know when to buy and, and sell them. And then uh, just uh, move on to the next player. Steve Carlton. Yeah, sometimes you sell them a couple weeks early. I mean, I... You know... I messed up on, on one of my bigger cards I had at the time. I had a, you know, during the craze, I, I bought a box of Prism a few years ago, right? Pulled a Zion Silver fresh out of the pack. I sent him to grade. It came back a 10. Those shits were like $5,000, I think, at the time. And I would said, you know what? Since I only spent like $100, I'm just going to I'm just gonna hold on to him. I believe in this kid. You know, I think he's going to do well. And now that, that card is probably not even worth like 800 bucks. Now I still have it. But I should have sold him. <laughs> you know, I should have sold him when I had the chance. But I never did. And I missed out on a big payday there too. But you just never know. Not everyone's going to turn into the next LeBron, the next Mike Trout, the next, you know, etc. So. And again, I had no, no value. I had no, like, personal interest in holding on to him. I just said, I think it's going to be one of the cards I'll just try to let it ride. Because I usually do sell. The majority of my stuff, minus a couple of my PC players. But, yeah. You just never know.
Yeah. Sell it now, right? And then you can buy him again later in the off season for cheap. And then if you still believe in the guy, right? That's when you do that. Exactly. You just re- just buy that card later. Be like, you know, I'll get a thousand bucks. Boom. I'll buy that card for like five hundred dollars in the off season. <laughs> Well, see, that's the thing, man. John Moran is not doing anything wrong in the NBA when it comes to on the court. He's still a star. It's his off the court stuff that's kind of killing his career. For Zion, it's kind of hard for him to stay on the court. So that's the kind of interesting part. I, I think I think everybody knows that John Moran is a star, and and uh, he should still be able to dominate this league as long as it doesn't have any major injuries, but he is uh, ruining it for himself with his off the field or off the court issues. So John Moran has taken a hit, but I don't know if it's as bad as a hit as I am though. For sure, John. I think he, he looks like he's going to stay hot. He definitely looks like one of those players, you know, kind of were like when Julio just got called up last year and just stayed up, and now obviously he's an established player, you know. He definitely looks like he has that potential. Yeah, dude. So I, I still believe in Zion. I really do, but it's just I'm starting to really... Uh, I'm starting to really just... Get to that point where, like, I can't even defend this guy anymore. You know? Like. And the thing with Zahn is that he's getting those nagging injuries, too. Like, it wasn't even a knee issue, I think, this time around. It wasn't a groin that kept him out. And you can't mess with groins, right? If you if you re-pull that or re-injure that groin injury again, it just gets worse. And it's one of those nagging injuries that just don't go away. And the one thing for Zahn is that he just he's just been getting injured at the wrong time. Like, he starts the season... Well, healthy, and then boom, gets injured, and then doesn't play during the playoffs potentially. You know, where it's like, okay, fine, like get injured for a few weeks or whatever, but do it like early so that way you're in the you're in, you're good at for the time of the playoffs because again, that's when people most likely that's where people most likely start selling for a lot more. I mean, look at Jokic, Murray. I think everybody's seen how dominant those players are now nationally. That. Their value has skyrocketed, but that's because it's playoffs, you know? So it's like if Zion and the Pelicans could be in the playoffs and healthy, then I think he'll shine. And that's the one thing. Oh, hamstring, sorry. Hamstring or groin, either one. But see, that's the one thing. When you go look at Zion's stats, now he doesn't play a lot, right, throughout the year. But, man, when he does play, he is so dominant. His stats don't lie. His stats do not lie. Like So, like, that's why it's kind of hard for me to call him a bust. <clears throat> disappointment for sure, but not a really a bust because it's not like, you know, like Anthony Bennett, or one of those guys where when they were on the court, they just they just did not transition well. Just were horrible. Like, we know when Zion's healthy, he's going to dominate, right? He'll be one of the best players on the court. But the fact is that he just can't stay healthy. So he's just more of those injury prone. It kind of sucks that injuries are derailing his career at this young of his, at this early of his career, you know? So, that's why I don't like to label him as a bust, but I definitely know that he's injury prone for sure. It's like looking back at what if, man, you know. If you remember Brandon Roy from, like, uh, from Portland? Dude was a baller, man. So good. But again, those knee problems, man. You know, Penny Hardaway, too. You're right, yeah, best ability is available, yeah. I don't know, I heard Zion's going to be a father now. He's going to have a, ch- a kid, so. Although it was the craziest thing on in social media, because I guess he was, like, promising something for another girl, but <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get into it, so you guys can check it out, but I don't know. Maybe things change. But, yeah, he, Rex is right, though. He's still only 22. <laughs> He's still super young. 
Derrick Rose, that's another big name too, yeah. MVP at such a young age, dominant, and then that major injury just kind of just messed it up. Yeah, he's he has a girl, but he was also like promising things to the, like an adult entertainer. That's what I'll say. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Hey man, he's twenty two, right? He's still a kid. That's the one thing, man. He's these 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 athletes that come into the league at such a young age, like nineteen twenty. I mean, they're millionaires, multi millionaires at that young. It's like it's crazy. That's why it's so amazing to me when you go see LeBron's career, how, like, I mean, maybe he's done stuff, but we'll never find out, but never once out there in the media doing anything crazy or doing anything bad, for, per se, you know? Yeah, not, not, not like John Moran or anything like that. Kyler Murray. That was... Wasn't that something, though? You guys remember when he signed that big contract? and But in his, in his like, contract, like, uh, like, clauses or negotiations in there is that he had to commit to, like, X amount of hours for, like, leadership stuff. <laughs> you know? Like... And then they took it back and said they took that out of the... Out of the... He took that out of the contract... But yeah, he's just too busy playing Call of Duty. Study film. Did you really, John? Yeah, I mean, I don't blame any of those athletes, though, man. A lot of these athletes like LeBron and stuff, you know, you know. Get your bag, man. Get your bag, you know. All of these high schools now and, and, and colleges in general, obviously, making so much money off you. It's only fair. I mean, imagine if LeBron James is coming out of, going out of high school into college. At this era, how much NIL money he'd be getting right now? At this point, sometimes for some college athletes, it's probably best to stay in college now. Make a couple milli before you even get to the pros. And at least you'll be better situated. I mean, it's like Reggie Bush, right? I mean, the whole... The whole pain stuff. I don't think he ever got paid anything, but I think he, I think he bought his mama house, right? At USC from USC. But all of these, all of these schools are paying these these kids under the table somehow, some way to get them to go to school. Oh wow, Julio! This is only my second home field advantage in like ten cases. Pulled one yesterday with a Josh Jung. This time we got a Julio Mariners, Rick Thomas. Uh, they are, there is a LeBron film, I think. I, I don't know if it's on Hulu or if it's on Disney, but I think they did make one recently of, of like his teammates or something like that, right? In high school. Oh, it's a TV show. Oh, even better. So it's like episodes. I think the one of the main actors from uh, from the straight from Stranger Things is, is on there, right? He's playing one of LeBron's teammates, I believe. Fizio. 
And then we have a Nationals autograph there. Petrell. Jackson. Nationals going to Franklin. I don't know. I can't wait for football to be back already, honestly. Just itching. Itching for some football. I heard Teddy talking about fantasy football already yesterday. He was just like, I know it's so early, but... If I get the number one pick, I'm taking Travis Kelsey. <laughs> and we got a Garrett Mitchell. Ooh, that's nice. Garrett Mitchell started off this season pretty hot, too. I don't know about now, though. That's a, is that a 299. LeBron James, right? Yeah, dude. I mean, just looking at all his high school film, man. I mean, it's like, it's like seeing Zion play. In high school, right? Playing against those little kids. Man, those dudes are just so good. I'm curious to see how Victor Webb and Yawa plays, man. If, obviously, he stays healthy, too. I don't know if he's had any injury problems yet, but... You know. He's going to be a rare talent, too, if he can stay healthy. Bob Gibson. I think they can Rex, but I don't see it happening, man. I think uh, I think Denver just kind of let that game two kind of get out of hand and almost came back. And I just think they've just settled shit down now. I don't. I think he have no answers for them. I think it could happen though, but I it's rare. It's it's. I think it's over. Stephen Kwan. That's for the Guardians. Uh, Shane. Paulo Santana. Alright guys, second to last box here.
Tommy Henry. <laughs> I believe that's Mr. Gilmore's. And we have D.L. Hall. D.L. 32 out of 50. That's for the Orioles. Going to Billingsley. Nick Allen to four ninety-nine. And we have a black Colton Wong. I think these are what out of seventy two? I remember they used to be at like sixty seven. I think every year they just go up, right? All right, out of 75, we have a Mark McGuire, RBI leaders in the NL. And then we got a Ronald Acuna Jr. And again, this one is also kind of messed up. The, looks like the acetate on the top is kind of coming off on a lot of these cards, unfortunately. But I'm sure you can request a replacement if need be. But it just kind of sucks because, you know, for a card like this, it's like going to be such a hassle. We got Bryce Wilson. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's so crazy. I think he's still very undervalued, too, man. I just think for his career so far, it's just been kind of weird because like he does so well, and then he gets injured, and then you know kind of missed that World Series run, and they still won without him. Yeah, that dude is so good too. That 2018 draft class is just something else. Just looking back at it now, it is pretty darn loaded. All right, here we go. Last jumbo box here, guys. Ooh, Camo. Ramon Laureano. Number to 25. That's kind of nice. 
Oakland. Wonder Franklin. Dude, he was so excited with the whole base rules. The whole, you know, the, the dimension of the base. <laughs> and we have a Simon Woods Richardson. To 2 dollars Anderson Craig Biggio. It's cool. Astros. 1988. 35th anniversary. Uh, Astros. That's going to Andrew Long. We have Alec Thomas to 99. Future stars. Alrighty guys, last stack here should have a couple more hits. Then we'll go through all the silver packs as well. Lars Nutbar. Mark McGuire again, this time it's not numbered. We have Devers for the Red Sox. Devers, Red Sox. That is uh, Chris Barrett. We have Hayden. Alrighty guys, awesome. Now let's go quickly through uh, the silver packs. Hopefully we do have some nice 
Uh, nice numbered cards, maybe some autos, who knows? I think we did get an auto in one of the first ones I did. So you see a backwards card, and most likely it's numbered slash potentially auto. Alright, here we go, guys. Gunnar Henderson, Yoshida, and out of 99, Max Muncy for the Dodgers. Out of 50, Xander Bogarts, and that one is autographed. Nice. Padres. 12 out of 50. Frank, my last spot, Mojo. Alrighty, folks, and there you go, guys. So again, we got a Xander Bogarts auto, Ronald Acuna relic, Stephen Kwan relic, Garrett Mitchell to two ninety nine, I believe. Jackson, Ted Ralt, Riley Green relic, little medallion, Carlton, Jonathan India autograph, Joey Votto relic, Yanner Diaz auto relic, there of Michael Harris, medallion, Carl Yastrzemski, Aaron Judge, Kirloff auto, Devers relic, McGuire. Biggio Auto, Loriano to 25, Camo, Mark McGuire number to 75 there. We got a black out of 72, Colton Wong, D.O. Hall to 50, Gold Auto, Bob Gibson, and then we did get a home field advantage, Julio. So there you go, folks. And then, of course, a lot ton of numbered cards and golds and all the rookies that we sleeve up in top of load. So appreciate you guys. JaspiesCaseBreaks.com. Now let's switch scenes and let's do the uh, Box Party promo spot giveaway. So let's copy, paste, dice roll. Three and a six, nine times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine times, three, six, nine, nine. Emma Warwick, congratulations. You just won a spot after nine times. Invite to the wax party. Perfect, guys. Thank you. JaspiesCaseBreaks.com, guys. Check out some more breaks on the website.